अंग्रेज अपना लगान और न्यूज लॉन्ड्री अपना हफ्ता कभी नहीं छोड़ते वेलकम टू अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ एन एल हफ्ता वी रिकॉर्डिंग दिस ऑन द ट्वेंटी नाइन्थ ऑफ फेब दैट मीन्स इट्स लीप ईयर एंड दिस डे विल कम अगेन फोर ईयर्स फ्रॉम नाउ वी रिकॉर्डिंग दिस एट थ्री फिफ्टीन इन द आफ्टरनून ऑन अ थर्सडे ऑन लास्ट फेबरी डे ऑफ लीप ईयर इन द स्टूडियो यू कैन सी देर इज नो मनीषा बिकॉज शी इज गोन बी ऑन चर्च आर्ट दिस वीक Uh, but before i make the announcement and get into the discussion let me tell you who is on the panel joining us from chennai is our colleague jashree hi jashree hello hello in the studio raman kripal hello and we have our guest today uh from our partners the news minute and thank you so much for all the support you have given us and our stories did very well our joint investigation and you will see a lot more joint investigations so dipto is the executive editor at the news minute he's based in bangalore he is in delhi recording some stuff and we are thrilled to have him in office quite regularly uh, he you. has written on everything from community to corruption politics and he's here doing a very special podcast series which you should soon see maybe in 3 4 5 weeks when are we kicking off as soon as you can give me the go ahead because you're the teacher so i'm here <laughs> no honestly i'm here because uh, abhinandan is teaching me and i and i uh, i'm really grateful for that oh, because uh, then I, yeah. i was expecting something nice now no, no. my No, no, same. So I, I'm, I'm not very comfortable with the uh, format, no. So I've been on this teaching me the game, the video game. I'm trying to convince him to do video more often because I think he's got a fantastic personality for video, and video is a very effective medium. In fact, this entire podcast is on video today purely because so many of you have said. So see, video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Video works. Video works. So you got to do more video. Absolutely. You should also mention that he was in the viral photo of the two of you that Danya yeah, put up. Yeah, everyone's making fun of that. <laughs> okay. Excellent work by Danya. You saw the video. Dhanya. I saw the video. Yes, uh, Dhanya, the one Dhanya tweeted, no? Ha. Yeah, I retweeted that as well. We are trying to do this so office, the <laughs> serial. Yeah. Yeah. So before we get into the headlines, I have a very important announcement to make, and also an apology. Many of you have been facing issues with our app, and now I think most of them are fixed. By the time this goes up, ninety-five percent of the app issues are fixed. but because not all the issues are fixed the podcast will still be outside the paywall because that paywall is causing a bit of a problem so this app issue started and in some cases even on the website but basically the app about 2 3 weeks ago we faced what is called a ddos attack on our website and app server it is basically when someone gets a lot of bots and sends traffic to your server through bots not actual human beings and that clogs up your server i don't know why this is being done apparently i've been told it is not unusual for news websites to undergo these attacks but we yeah. are going through this even now so because of that now when you go onto the website you see checking whether you're a human or a machine so that is why you get that pop up we are fixing these issues and that's the reason some of you see that cloud fair verification a ddos attack as soon as we mitigated it things should be back to normal uh, there are more checks and we are putting more security protocols in place but till then yes this ddos hmm. attack right i was checking with some people and uh, an, an attack of this scale requires a lot of organizing yeah are you guys being singled out for it i don't know we uh, have and a lot of money also i heard it's not cheap Basi- yeah if you just do it like one day or half a day then it's not that expensive but because we've been facing it for two week continuously yeah chances are there's some significant it's an organized thing, deliberate yeah. so we are taking whatever steps are necessary so that's the reason these fixes are happening but i do hope you will appreciate isi bahane hafta in charcha are free this week yet again for the third week uh, we'll pull them behind the paywall when everything is absolutely running fine but do continue to subscribe and pay to keep news free in fact pick up the joint subscription of the news minute and the news laundry you will see all the products all the stories all the wonderful podcasts etc and soon you will also see Young Chidipto's podcast. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> young man, yeah, we. Okay. Youngy, to hai tu yar. Come on. Ha, I think. See, you're you're in the company of oldies. Yeah, I mean, so. yeah, no, no. You, you see, you see your two co-panelists. You're sitting <laughs> with a young <laughs> person. Okay. Ha. Aap to hamare umar ke hain. Ye to mudhe hoga. This side. Raman sir and I are on the same team. Yeah. And, and and also here's a teaser. This podcast was done because lots of our subscribers had said that rather than just discuss the Israel Palestine issue. on hafta we should get area experts so we got to some of the finest experts from around the world and the let's talk about israel palestine is finally out here's a teaser weapon 
that is utilized on behalf of Israel is any criticism of Israel is considered anti-Semitic and the, the badge of anti-Semitism is the kiss of death. Netanyahu on record has said that there won't be a Palestinian state on my watch. The majority of Israelis want to replace him, but not in the middle of the war. They don't expect too much from those who might replace him. The change will not be dramatic when it comes to the Palestinian question. The notion you just mentioned that the people without the land came to a land of, uh, without people was the biggest lie of Zionism. Because it was a people without a land who came to a land with a people. Welcome to Let's Talk About Israel and Palestine. So check that out. It's behind the paywall only for subscribers. Uh, but now let's get into the headlines and then we have lots of other announcements which I can make later. Jeshree, all yours. Yes, so here are the headlines for the week. So the Rajya Sabha polls took place in three states and there was controversy in all three with allegations of cross-voting. So in Karnataka, the Congress won three seats, the BJP won one. In Himachal, the BJP shockingly emerged victorious in the election for a single vacant Rajya Sabha seat. And please remember the Congress is in power in Himachal with 40 MLAs in the 68-member assembly. In UP, UP, the Samajwadi Party took a hit after at least seven of its MLAs cross-voted in favor of the BJP. This meant the defeat of one of the SOP of the SP's candidates. Hmm. So yes, we can discuss this in yes. detail. Hmm. Also, this week, the Supreme Court temporarily restrained Ramdev's company Patanjali Ayurved from from advertising any of its products meant to address specific diseases and disorders as listed in the Drug and Magic Remedies Act. I see people have just started calling him Ramdev. I mean, it's like how if you no. want to show that you're not being respectful, you won't call him Yogi Adityanath. You'll be like, his name is Adityanath. No, even I won't about. use his title. No, in fact, uh, he lost his uh, title because he got into so many businesses. Baba, in Fatu fact... Jin banata hai, har cheez, uh, Fatu Jin Banata, Harchi... Fatu Jin. Anything under the... Ha, earlier he used to make jokes of this Fatu Jin. Uh, so, no, but in the uh, submission to the Supreme Court, his lawyer, Sanghi, no? some Sanghi his name mm-hmm. is. He calls him a sanyasi. He's still a sanyasi. You don't give a sanyasi. You're not giving a sanyasi. You're not giving a sanyasi. But today, the Indian Express has launched its annual... You know, supplement of the ah. 100 most powerful people in the country. 100 above 100. Ah. So, in that, uh, one of the top 100 most powerful people in the country is Ramdev, not Baba Ramdev. So, even they've dropped the Baba. Right. <laughs> so. But, you know, speaking of titles, there was this kindness festival that happened in Chennai. It was very, it was organized by a bunch of socialites. It was called the International Kindness Festival with lots of sessions and stuff. So, one of their speakers was S. Gurmurti. And the other speaker was Abhijit Ayurmitra, ah, who was so. talking about kindness in the world. Are all. you serious? And his title... Yeah, yeah. As they introduced him, he was introduced as stand-up comedian Abhijit Ayer Mitra. So <laughs> and something else. Some, clearly uh, that. Some, what, a political analyst? No, not a political Something else. <laughs> no, some people also describe him as a political some, analyst. Some, yeah. He's a defense analyst. Defense analyst. Yeah. That was the interesting one. Ha, exactly. Abhijit Ayer Mitra. Uh, kindness but he's now, shed right. defense for stand-up comedy, allegedly. Right. I'll be in Chennai, by the way, uh, next week, Jeshri. So, like, why? I mean, <laughs> sorry, that ah, why? Okay, why? I won't yeah? come. Fine, it's fine. I won't come. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Obviously, my first reaction is excitement. It was very... I have to corrupt why? the minds of IIT Madras children. I'm speaking oh. there. Hmm. I'll come attend. I'm very close to it. Great. Excellent. Anyway, in other headlines, uh, Trinmool Congress leader Sheikh Shah Jahan, against whom multiple allegations of land grab and sexual assault have been made, was finally arrested la- last night by the West Bengal police. Yes, and BJP yeah. has claimed credit. It is done because of the pressure they built with their protests, which may be true, of course. I think. A report by a research group called India Hate Lab uh, documented 668 instances of anti-Muslim hate speech in India last year. 498 or 75% took place in BJP governed states. Yep, I'm not surprised. In fact, if we were to break it down, I want to see how many people affiliated with the Sangh Parivar were there in each of these. Mm. You know, uh, someone sent me a video of this entire group of people in Chhattisgarh taking a an oath that we shall not sell or buy things from Muslims, etc. Hmm. So someone said, is this real or is it happening in place? Is it happening in this place, whatever in Chhattis? 
I said it's happening in many places in the country. It's not just one. It's happening in Delhi. Delhi NCR. It happened in uh, Gurgaon. Yeah, I, in, I think in the Haryana. other day uh, I I had spoken about it mm. in my. There's a biodiversity park near my mm. place, so I went for a walk in the morning, and uh, it was soon after some state where the BJP had won. So, hundred, two hundred people, RSS uh, apparently, but their wives also, the mm. entire family get together. And there, they were uh, swearing on this. Run, huh? Best way to spend time with family. Yes. Hmm. Right. So um, the CBI has summoned has summoned Akhilesh Yadav for questioning in connection with an illegal sand mining case from 2019, which he has skipped. On, yes, he is one amongst many former CMs and opposition leaders being summoned as we speak. On Saturday, the government has released the Household Consumption Expenditure Survey of 2022-23. This is after more than a decade. It's conducted every five years, and the last results in 2017-18 were junked because the government had quality issues with the data. So according to the survey, an Indian family on average monthly spends 6,500 in urban area, 3,800 rural areas. Uh, yeah, so average monthly consumption expenditure has risen by 2.5 times. And only 5% of the country is poor. They have changed the methodology, yes. which well, they uh, did, didn't speak about. In fact, uh, the variables are not even comparable. You can't compare them, you know, on the, hmm. because the methodology the base, was different. Whatever the base. In 2011, 2012. Uh, so so I, I just think it's, I mean, of course, many people ask this question that if only 5% of the country is poor, why 80 crore being given free rations? Yeah, you of know, course. It doesn't make sense. Of then. course. Hmm. Yeah, but the bottom line of this is that the spending gap between the richest and poorest households is about 10 times. In Manipur, pol police personnel across the valley districts laid down arms uh, this week to protest against the abduction of an additional superintendent of police by members of a radical mighty outfit. That was really disturbing. I mean, yeah. Imagine there's just the police laying down its arms. No, wow. the thing is, only 18% of the arms have been recovered, you know, after yeah, the loot. Yeah. So imagine, I mean, 18% means 82 there. are out. Yeah. With these, uh, you know, maithi or cookies, whatever. Yeah. Right. Then in Tamil Nadu, the DMK has finalized its Lok Sabha poll seat sharing with the left parties. The CPI and CPIM will get two seats each. Modi, meanwhile, was in Tirunelveli. He said the time has come to drive away the DMK and that the center's inability to complete projects is only due to the DMK's non cooperation. So, what's your take sure. on this? Huh, so, I have some fun, I mean, slightly gossipy things about the Tamil Nadu and the BJP, which is all very like, so one, J.P. Nadda was in, uh, he came to Chennai like a couple of weeks ago and was very fruitless. So they said he was staying at this fancy hotel and they said he's devoting the entire evening to meeting with all the parties who want to ally with him. And he's coming ahead of Modi's visit to Tirunal Valley because he's going to stitch the alliance. Hmm. Then no one came, no parties arrived. So then finally Annamale issued the statement saying, you know, actually J.P. Nadda was too busy to meet people so he couldn't. <laughs> then they took him to make a speech somewhere and he was driving through this very public market, I think in Mint area. And then he complained and complained later and he said, oh, it's like the emergency in Chennai. The DMK is imposing emergency. All the shops were shut. But it was a Sunday, so the shops <laughs> were obviously shut. Mm. So the entire thing was very comical. Then the state BJP organized this press conference in Coimbatore and they invited all the media. They said leaders from major parties are going to be joining the BJP in your presence, so please come. So this was to start at 5.30. By 6.30, nobody had come. So then they quietly said, we are postponing for unforeseen reasons and... <laughs> Cancel the entire thing. But so, what about the uh, DMK led alliance? Yar kuch seat kudko pooranga idhar na teri ma. Ticket yar kudko pooranga na. DMK is now. Uh, I think they had one chat with the Congress a couple of days ago. So the Congress has asked for some twelve seats. I think the DMK has offered nine. So there is, but the Congress is not happy. But and the four seats to the left. Two four to the left, to... maybe twelve to the Congress. The rest, I'm not sure. It's only what thirty eight, thirty nine seats. Is Raja's now, so. name doing the rounds again? Yeah, yeah, he's. But yeah. also this BJP alliance thing. I mean, the thing is that I feel even small parties know the BNG, BJP will take them nowhere, right? So currently, the only people who really want to pa to partner are the OPS led ADMK. Uh, you know, because uh, OPS has nowhere to go. And that superstars uh, party. Vijay, Vijay, yeah. just Vijay is politics. not contesting this. He's not election. Contest this, He'll contest sorry. the next. Next one. Oh, I see. So and Kamal Hassan, the DMK has said uh, the Congress can maybe put up Kamal Hassan as one of their candidates. Oh. But Kamal Hassan has not agreed so far to this proposition. Mm, mm. So interesting, but I, I, I but mean, it's at least it's happening. How quickly 
you know everything's falling into place in spite of the media trying its best to say oh it's not working out and insult to congress insult to this but yeah let's go ahead with the rest of the headlines and uh, while we're at it quickly also uh, kerala hmm. there is no truck no so it is the left yeah of course own, kerala yeah but no I'm, but there's all that controversy you know about any uh, any raja and kerala because rahul gandhi is standing from wayanad they put up any raja from also from wayanad and yeah. so she is going to be terribly competitive for So I heard Rahul that Gandhi. it uh, okay there was a toss up between uh, D Raja competing once more from uh, Tamil Nadu uh, but then they f- they went in favor of Ani Raja in Kerala so yeah. that's going to be interesting uh, I don't know which congress leader was it who had tweeted that the fact that uh, um you know the communists announced their candidate from Wayanad proves that they are actually bjp's b team man come you know, my th- god this is <laughs> next level <laughs> bjp's b team no but <laughs> both the parties i i i was preparing for that show no what's your ism i was trying to interview uh, mr raja and yachuri mm. you know so the cpi is uh, has an entire section on why it was wrong for uh, rahul to stand from wayanad and if he's really one of those people is going to take on a communal party mm. do it where communalism is Uh, peaking, yeah, do it from a place where you yeah, it makes well, a difference. That's a very good point. It's though. a good yeah. point. I mean, I yeah. can't disagree with yeah. that. Mm. Yes. So in Delhi, the DDA on Wednesday demolished the house of one of the Uttarakhand tunnel rescuers, Vakil Hasan. According to authorities, they conducted the demolition drive to remove encroachments yeah. from land acquired in a village. It's shocking. So we remember that there was this much publicized. Every politician extracted their ten minutes of fame after these miners who were trapped for so long. On fact, the rat miners. I, I don't know if, Achha, the, if the, any follow-up uh, story miners. has happened on uh, who were those guys. You know, the oh, the, we... the agency that was responsible for that have has actually been taken against them. Any arrest been made, etc. But the people who rescued it, this guy is one of those. And the Lieutenant Governor of Delhi today has said that he will be rehabilitated and a house been given. Maybe we should keep a track of that, as and when it was Absolutely. is given. Absolutely. And they were not they were not given any. Good money, you know, when they rescued these forty-four mm. trapped mm. miners, and we had done one video with all of them, introducing. Yeah. There were twelve or thirteen of them. The so link we, is in the show uh, notes below. Yeah, and also, I mean, the thing is that okay, they're giving him a house and all now, but they didn't give him any notice. Is what he says before they just no, not just the house. notice. And his so, his was the uh, his claim is that his was the only house which was picked up for. Demolition. Yeah. The rest of the colony is standing there. This happened in which city? So how can you say Delhi? Delhi. Delhi. Is it Khajuri part of the forest department? Uh, it's in Khajuri Khas. Forest D- department is doing some clear clearances. No? no, this is DDA. I saw a bunch of stories. No, okay. <laughs> hmm. Yes. Then in I think what is the most important headline I will read today? The Tripura government has suspended the state's principal chief conservator of forests. Ah. This is over ah. the row surrounding the names Akbar and Sita that were given to two lions. Mm. A hilarious uh, anchor Shocking. by my old uh, colleague and friend mm. Jay Mozumdar in Indian Express, mm. where he is one thousand word article where he has given names of different uh, of the animals in the past since nineteen seventy. So there are so many such names, you know, Muslim animals staying with the Hindu animal. Not anymore. It's just <laughs> and. Like, uh, A Pakistani journalist had tweeted because there was a case of this one uh, lady who was wearing uh, salwar kameez with stuff li- written in Arabic. I don't know whether you saw it was major news. She was attacked by a mob and was rescued by a police woman who has been given a, a special commendation and a promotion. She was rescued by her because you know they would have lynched her that oh she's wearing uh, you know Quran verses as a outfit oh, etc. No. Disrespect. So the police actually protected her, which is a lot more, which is. Way more that Tim D said for the police here when they have to protect someone from the lynch mob, and um, then they had a video of these Islamic scholars and clerics going over the kurta to see if there's any blasphemy or not. Do any of these Arabic, you know, whatever alphabets or words denote anything from the Quran? And they said no, this is not from the Quran. It's general Arabic. So, so this was said. People are landing on the moon, and this is Pakistan. This is what our resources and our police and our law enforcement. Are. So I was like, dude, actually we are not very far from you. We are doing both. We are also standing on the moon, but we are also doing this. <laughs> I mean, you think about it, yeah. It is you see, and you see the, the BJP ads, the Modi ads. You know, पहले तो people used to chant anti-India slogans. अब किसी की हिम्मत नहीं होती. करबा क्या दी? क्या दी? करबा क्या दी? क्या दी? करबा क्या दी? 
अरे यार हमको कोई सीरियसली लेता ही नहीं है वो भी क्या दिन थे जब हम खुलेआम देश तोड़ने की बातें करते थे और लोग तालियां बजाते थे अब अपनी संस्कृति की बात करना गाली नहीं रही ना जब देश का प्रधानमंत्री ही अयोध्या जाके नींव रखेगा तो सड़क से लेके सोशल मीडिया तक संस्कृति का जोर तो होगा ही भाई जब से मोदी आया है ना इस देश की लहरी को चला गया पहले सबूत मांग लेते थे अरे धर्म का मजाक उड़ा लेते थे अरे देश तोड़ने के नारे मन से लगाते थे और अब पब्लिक ही हमारी रेल बना देती है जब तक मोदी है इस देश में हमारा एजेंडा नहीं चलेगा तो आ जाओ। देश और धर्म को मजाक समझने वाले अपने होश में रहें इसलिए मोदी जरूरी है ब्लडी बीजेपी इलेक्शन एड्स आर सेंग फ्रीडम ऑफ स्पीच इज अ बैड थिंग इट इज बिजा no in this particular case the judiciary i mean even the judge was just laughing it off mm. he was quite sarcastic i mean it's a beautiful story in live law mm. where you know uh, verbatim produced you know the mm. the arguments that happened in the court mm. so despite uh, since it did not work in the uh, it did not uh, work in the court the vhp uh, mm. petition now the government is suspending somebody in tripura, in tripura. why the do you bu- name the bureaucratic uh, This is ridiculous. Height of it. Shocking. Anyway, yep. So then in Uttar Pradesh, the government announced that the police constable recruitment exam that was held uh, last week stands cancelled. This is after hundreds of candidates held demonstrations saying the pa- question paper was leaked. Congress has taken credit for this. Yes, the Congress slammed the BJP over the paper leak and has now also demanded a CBI inquiry. And that has become one of the rallying point for the. coming right. election hmm. and finally in washington dc an, a us airman named aaron bushnell died after setting himself on fire in front of the israeli embassy while shouting free palestine he said this was an extreme act of protest and he would no longer be complicit in genocide yeah very disturbing video and here's where you can see media's manufacturing consent or manufacturing whatever had some th- i mean i saw the video it is very disturbing and i mean i I'm always on the fence of whether such videos should be put out or should not be put out because we we had this discussion when Time Magazine had the cover of those kids who were gassed to death mm. in I think Syria it was I'm not mm. I don't recall uh, but had something so horrific and grotesque happened uh, which was not the politics of which weren't what this one was you know CNN everyone would have carried it but this shows. how the same thing done by someone else is ignored by the media which is what manufacturing consent is all about so i think it's an yeah, interesting I mean, the, the new york times headline i think was man dies after setting himself outside on fire outside embassy police say so just mm. as sort of con- and time magazine that was even worse time magazine's entire story on uh, the self immolation said um It quoted the Defense Department as saying, "But you know, service members on duty are not allowed to participate in political activity. In fact, they shouldn't even be wearing their uniform while they participate." And that isn't the point, right? I mean, it's not that you're trying to buy a military coat posthumously. So, I think. So, and the one headline which we haven't featured here, but it's been featured on pretty much every legacy media, is Anand Tambani is taking very good care of elephants <laughs> in some place. So. Whether it is headlines today, Economic Times, yeah. Network eighteen channels, Anand Tambani is everywhere, telling us how elephants are lovely. So, but we don't have that headline. I, I guess because you know we don't take ads from Reliance. I mean, I don't know what the reason is, or maybe we don't have animal lovers in our midst. But yeah, I, I think. Saying. But here, I think in this particular case, hmm. the uh, maybe this has been released, you know, at a time. There are two reasons. One is is marriage. Hmm. Uh, and second is there are lots of people are trying to you know uh, there were reports in the past that these people have illegally yeah. made this yeah. uh, zoo and in fact I got this story about a mm. yeah. year ago mm. and I was also a little uh, you know Skeptical curious about, about it yeah. still curious about it why not I mean let me just check so and I checked it with the when I saw the this thing uh, you know the 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 arrangements that they have made this bonded. elephants absolutely fabulous i i i was given that 3d no i have no doubt about it but i'm just it's it's not news it's i mean it's it's they they're feeding 100 people he's i mean every channel to carry this young boy saying how i love elephants there are lots of people doing very 
someone we know yeah. distributes blankets every winter to people in delhi night after night i have yet to see one channel cover him what i'm saying is it is a it is a idiot story which is being done by every the channels did not have the time to send a reporter to manipur are doing half an hour specials on anant ambani and elephant seriously but that is because the animal so it's this is at vantara or whatever that yeah, yeah. reliance foundation has set up so they invited all these journalists from all these mm. channels to come for a junket Basically, and their stories were supposed to be released around the same time, and everyone has done it. I think only a couple bothered putting the disclaimer at the bottom, saying that we so were here at just the invitation. That troll of... accounts who tweet nothing sensible in their lives suddenly saying what wonderful, yeah. Anantama, wonderful things he is doing. I mean, you know the usual that eminent intellectual type who all their job is just troll every day. They have nothing sensible to say on Twitter. They all this is lovely. This is all. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. dude, no, it's fine. It, this was. to counter that criticism uh, this is coming out a but uh, the real story behind this where the senior officer told me that uh, the whatever you know guru they follow uh, the ambanis so he had told that if you take care of wounded elephants oh. so it will uh, it will help your your family kalyan hoga family ka उंडलीफ्रेंड्सिंग I imagine myself being that 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 powerful or that rich, and I wouldn't give a damn, yeah. About this, you know, <laughs> they don't. Some yeah. Abhinandan is telling me, t- telling something about my elephants <laughs> to hell with you, you know. But it only goes to show that public perception matters. What what the public Va- think about thinks about the Vastil <laughs> yes, matters yes. because the Vastil might be breached one day. Vanity, might, vanity is still I mean, our main instinct. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See, the no. best example of that is. the murzis who yeah. refuse to let us not know anything about their lives like i think the most recent press release was sudhamurthy experiencing menopause explains <laughs> to husband that she has mood swings and it's like why did yeah. you paid someone to write out the press release for this and then send it to journalists and something about her poverty think, there's always something about her and people do pick her. it up like no but so, she there's always also something to do always with their uh, uh, what do you call it poverty po- their ha. simplicity Aust- she hasn't bought a sari in Austerity. 50 years It's like that money makes them feel guilty. You think? I, I don't know. I don't I think it makes them no, feel guilty. No, but they commissioned Chitra Devkoni Banerjee. I mean, she's a pretty legit senior sort of writer, and they commissioned her to write an entire book on their glorious Austerity. love story. And oh, it's the just, love story! The, but I just astonishing. But my, my comment is on the media that this is not a story. Hmm. It is not a news story. Hmm. This billionaire's son likes elephants and takes care of it. It is at best a page three, page eight, single column. It's a feature. It is not a story. It is not bloody prime time on every channel, man. It is, mm-hmm. and that is what I mean about public interest journalism. This yeah. is not public interest journalism. This is anant interest journalism. It is to show how wonderful the boy is, and he may be wonderful. I mean, I don't know, but how is that relevant with all these resources that you cannot send a camera crew to Manipur, or you cannot send a camera? Mm. But you have half an hour shows on this dude. I mean, come on, it is. But public it, interest, bro. Though public, ko lagta hai interest hai na because you know the thing is I I don't know you know that's where I suppose the job of the media is to cultivate the public because dialogue to dekh to re millions of views to mil re you know that, so you you don't provide them what yeah, but you. But so that is a that is a cop out argument. Million subse zada views dunya me reality shows ko milte hain. That ah. is why journalism become reality shows. But that is not what journalism is, right? Reality show banana fir. What I'm saying is. the the purpose of this whole thing that people watch therefore they do is not it's not a journalistic argument oh it's not no no i'm just saying that there is this of course people they, they, watch, the people are being cultivated to watch this kind of stuff I mean, no, isn't news, isn't the greater argument the money that they're just mm, getting yeah, vast exactly. quantities and of you, money you, to yeah, do yeah, this of course news platforms so, have you know check out malaika arora speaks from a goa holiday of course you get clicks but should that be you know in the home page of a news website it shouldn't i mean it's no absolutely mm. no. Hmm. yeah 
So, uh, I have two more announcements and then we shall get right into the discussion and we'll start off with the Raj Sabha election, what they tell us about our politics. Uh, we have a new election fund in partnership with the News Minute and as you know, we will be covering the elections in an extremely robust and comprehensive way. So, the link is in the show notes below but you can also go on to the News Laundry website or the News Minute website. Uh, we will be doing this coverage together. There will be 15 reporters, producers and editors from News Laundry and the News Minute on the ground including Dhanya, Atul, Manisha, Sudipto and your contributions will power their work. How much time they can spend on the ground and what conditions they live in depend on how much funds you can create. This time I want a car at least. Uh, I am not going by bus anymore for reporting. No, okay. you, that huh. car the, Please, that, uh, yeah. not, they will not be sir, going I am not going by bus. I am waiting waiting for the bus. I am not going by bus. I am not going by bus. You will have a full day vehicle. That vehicle no? Only yeah. if the readers support then. Readers will support. Huh. Newslaundry.com or you can go to newsminute.com or just click on the show notes below. For those who are on our iOS, we have the election fund contribution option on the app too. But if you can, contribute via website uh, because then we get more money. So please, you can do that. Uh, so go through the browser, but do contribute. Uh, and finally, uh, there's another Nelsona project on the report card. Modi, that is also an uh, election coverage which we will do together. So both these links and the show notes do contribute because if you do not pay for our journalism, we will be forced to feature the children of billionaires because uh, that's the only way we'll survive. The elephant park otherwise. So, so that's the only journalism you'll see. Yeah. Tiger so park is I hope best. we can show you public interest journalism by sending all these people. Now let's start. Uh, so Hima um, Himachal Pradesh, Raj Sabha election, UP. Karnataka, that is your state and UP. Let's start with your state. Two BJP guys cross voted there. That that has to be a record, right? I don't think anyone's been able to pull that off. So BJP guys. Yeah, they cross. Yeah. So yeah. what is the future of these two gentlemen? And can you tell us something about them? Or the is question there... is how how long does someone wait in a bus stop for the bus to come? Like now that now then this bus stop. Now then there will be. Now this is bus the bus that's coming. coming. Yeah, they've got onto this bus and they've landed at this bus stop. Then now the next bus. So thing is, I know this is like a feature across the country. But in Karnataka, among us, we talk about how ideologically, actually, there's not much separating the average uh, BJP guy from a uh, average from the average uh, JDS guy from the average Congress guy, and uh, the the BJP's main leaders, starting with Yadurappa and all of these people, have a fairly they are benign Hindutva people. Huh? They are not like your feral frothing in the mouth, isko kato, usko kato kind of people. Mm. There are some elements like that in the BJP in in, in Karnataka, of course. You know, but uh, the problem is for us actually when we observe politics is that uh, Kumar Swami, a Yadurappa, and a Sidharama are actually great friends. Okay, बहुत अच्छा उनका you know they they have a good understanding ideologically mm -hmm. between them. So we don't have that polar kind of fight, which I suppose results sometimes in these kind of things, right? Which is you can't pick and choose between a party. कहीं भी पहुंच जाओ करना तो वही है. Yeah, uh, Karnataka politics is a little like that, I would say. So the three Congress MPs who went to the Raj Sabha, Ajay Makan, Nasir Hussain and GC Chandrasekhar. Uh, the BJP MLA, uh, ST Somashekhar voted for Ajay Makan and uh, Arabail Shivaram Hebar abstained from voting. So, one BJP chap also won, no? Uh, yeah, one BJP chap Bhandari. also won, correct. So, uh, you know, but coming to your point and I, you know, want to, take it to uh, Raj Jashri after that. I don't think it's so much about ideologically they're different. Ideologically they can be completely different. For example, ideologically, Congress, I mean, what all that, the, the rhetoric of, um, what's his name, uh, Apna, Sindhya, hmm. is completely different from what rhetoric he is spouting now. Um, or someone like, let's say, when this whole rumor was there of uh, Chindwada, Kamal Nath, mm -hmm. you know, going from here to there or a, a, a BSP MP who just ah, designed mm, and switched. Three, three of them. Three. Mm. I think generally our we as a people are not so committed to ideology. We, because of the how hierarchies have been and I keep harping back to the same thing, how they have just been drilled into us. If this is our guru, and he says, cut your thumb, Eklavya will cut off his thumb. Eklavya should have said, forget my thumb, here's my middle finger. That should have been Eklavya's. But, and we have, other than a, um, you know, uh, we have a station in Delhi named after Guru Dronacharya. I'm sure there are wonderful things about him, but 
the absolute that if this guy says right you know day day if this guy is night that is the mindset that makes it so easy for people to flip i don't think there is any i like we've run we did that whole series in kerala people join from the communists to the rss it's not like a they've changed shade they have flipped, flipped. Hmm. but their entire constituency or their entire gang will flip with them because if we say sir ne ye bola ye kar do sir ne ye bola wo kar do ideology to so i i think which is why in our context leaders are more important leaders determine our ideology you don't have any which is why i feel like ye jo that that the common discourse that we are all part of which is the discourse that involves crying over the rise of hindutva hmm. are desh ke values you know gutter mein gaye you know there is this entire i think and uh, that is not i feel the case you know it's just that they are a better managed electoral electoral machine uh they win elections because of that it's not because of some great ideological influence yeah, that they have on india that idea of india is lost ye wo na idea of india is won or lost there is a constituency of i suppose there are three basic fundamental pillars in indian uh, politics right you have the hindu right you have the hindu left and then you whatever is left which is what the people who live outside the village you have mm. an anti caste kind of politics in every part from kargil to north east to everywhere i've seen this out of the village kind of politics even among the manipuri people for example the maithai there is a bunch of people who are yes we are also maithai we are also chauvinist in some way but we are not part of that maithai identity because we live outside the village so these three fundamental pillars and beyond that ideology is just top dressing which means that uh, you know people go from here to there there to here and all that that it really doesn't matter Yeah, exactly. You know, and uh, better manage election next time may result result in some other so called secular or communist party winning and all of that. So no, absolutely. I, I think the provocation is: do, are we should we be, be be so worried about Hindutva then? No, of course you should be worried purely because you can make the people do a lot by leadership and the influence that you have over them through media. You have because it is leaders who will will determine. Bapu made this entire country embrace an idea which. now we say non violence non violence at that time the concept was a bizarre concept yeah you know it but he made a country follow him on that this is what i believe and not just so, the country the world follows yeah so so yeah, i mean violence. of course one has to be worried it is like it is like the same country that was that voted the nazis in full flow in two decades was so you know horrifically guilty about it i was saying that suddenly the species changed the nature changed leadership matters so you have to be worried about that you jashri what is your view on first of all the the flip uh, and also i just like to point out in uh, himachal pradesh the congress did a bjp singhvi Sing- uh, Sing- yeah. lost through how did they they drew lots because it was a tie yeah so see the thing is it doesn't matter the ideology doesn't matter especially for these sort of politicians so like you were saying himachal pradesh so i think the congress what the congress thought abhishek manu singhvi will sort of sail through because they and we have a majority da da no the bjp had nominated them former former congress guy as their candidate and the bjp has only 25 mlas but they got 35 34 votes right and so they tied with the congress they did one draw of lots the bjp guy won and then now the congress is saying now some of its mlas have been spirited away to a resort in haryana haryana right so i think that really sort of encapsulates the state of politics in india which is there is a chapter in our election history which will be devoted to mlas being taken to resorts because ideally ideology does not matter at all like i think the thing that really matters is utter sort of ruthlessness and especially when the bjp unless if you're like an idiot you'll know there is inducement or compulsion and the bjp does wheel this out very regularly and they have money and they have power they set their mind to it they can do it so in maybe like states like tamil nadu kerala they're a little bit far behind from having this power but in others they do and they have influence it's just a sort of expensive nudge so to say anything of this about ideology means that it's not it's yeah just relentless they're not conceding one quarter and i mean yes we should not hope for other parties to pick up dirty tricks but other parties need to learn how to be relentless and they're not you have to marshal no, your other party you dirty tricks your flow you have to be on top of it right i mean no, that, you have to lock away no, your no, mlas party... you should first lock your mlas in a resort before the bjp can take them away I, I, and in a state so, where you have the police on your side no no but uh, yeah. other parties also like this entire thing of this is not some bjp invention no i mean uh, no no that, not that, at all yeah, just yeah, because, that bjp is doing it well now yeah because see this uh, recently only there was last week only hafta na is hafte mein there was a huge fight between dhruv rathi and dilip mandal okay uh, dhruv rathi said ki uh, dictatorship dictatorship aa gaya india mein and dilip mandal just 
took off on him saying that kya hai ki kis dictatorship he pulled out like in uh, narsimha rao's time in a in a matter of a day or two some 15 governments were dis- i mean some seven mm-hmm. governments were dismissed ye wo wagera so this is uh, thoda rhetoric and thoda fact ka matlab oil and water ho raha hai yahan pe you know where you see that yeah, but but i think But again, but again, you know, that argument is again one that I. किसने नहीं किया जो ये लोग कर रहे हैं इन्होंने वही वही से सीखा हुआ ना. See, then that's a nihilist argument. Then nothing matters about anything. Hmm. Then, then, then we should not even be sitting here. Hmm. Then nothing matters. Everyone has done something horrible at some point or the other. Yeah. It is like it is like the BJP keeps saying, "What about emergency?" That and and that is a typical cop out argument. Because I mean, let's take that argument to its logical hmm. conclusion. Hmm. Okay, so they have done it. A level matters is hitler the only man who has murdered innocent no you know Stalin did so too. has the, 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 forget the man who defeated scale. the man who defeated him only did the for, same forget that scale uh-huh. you know even ashoka did right mm. ashoka also killed innocent people forget that in the regime of some of the most benign look at odisha you know innocents got killed there also during so is hitler the same as navin patnaik You see this whole thing that, uh, as if these guys haven't done it, then nothing matters, because there is no perfect organism or human being. The point is context matters. If in twenty twenty four, our understanding of democracy is what the understanding of democracy was in nineteen seventy five or seventy seven during the emergency, then either the person making that argument has not evolved, has not read anything after seventy five, or then nothing matters at any point. Then what is the cut off point? in my understanding and, uh, that is not an intelligent argument that is a 12 year old's argument and unfortunately people like mr mondol you know dilip mondol and all make these arguments purely to um you know kind of gloss over today let's talk about today True. no but how can you talk about okay so i i get that you know how can you talk about today without talking about how we got here that is the entire point the thing is that we have the history of a party like the congress You have the history of how the communists ruled West Bengal, for example. How did they get those thirty-two years under their belt, right? People who've lived in that regime know what it mean means. Sure. Uh, back in the day, I have seen with my own eyes that that in communist rule care in uh, Bengal, you couldn't go to the police station; you had to go to the party office, right? And these are things on which people have built. And the thing is, you lose your legitimacy to talk about these forces when you are part of when you're complicit in these things in the past. And we are not comparing. uh navin patnaik with hitler we are comparing uh, yes an indira gandhi with a modi it's 20 years apart only no 25 30 years apart but also i think you have to take into context that okay, once see if you do make that argument but then you also need to take into context that the party that is doing it now has the resources and the money that the parties before did not and i do think all that does add up so i think it's easy to shut down an argument by saying because it is a very undebatable point right hmm. but what about x which also did happen and you must obviously acknowledge it as something bad that did happen mm. but i can also still very confidently say yes but at the end of the day i do think the bjp is maybe even more powerful than the nehru era congress because of sheer terms of resources and money but the point so, i'll make i'll go even one step beyond this i don't have to acknowledge it yeah, i am talking sure. about the time i'm living in right mm. now as a thinking adult yeah. i think mr modi's dictatorship is a huge danger to me unless i have a time machine and i'm traveling back in time and i want to have a good time in the 70s i don't give a fuck what happened then no but 70s I, mein who I, I, who, I, I, who I, had so, a good time is a question no but, but no I, that is not a question in the context of what i'm saying if i have commentary that today's politics is this i think we should be alarmed and the person says no we shouldn't because it happened in 77 then go back to 77 i want to live today and i want to fight this and if you're saying i sh- i have i should not talk about this without talking about that i don't think that is a argument that is taking you anywhere then it is just a question of i want i want to just talk it is not leading yeah, us anywhere one upping no, the no, other person no no it's not a matter of one upping no kyunki anda aaj nahi phuta if you are saying ki today suddenly i will say i will not look at anything in the past today i want to know what's happening today give me a solution for today the solution for today is your history if you don't know your history then where are you going but you can know your history but you don't have to discuss it on oh, the same thing know. na if i make a video about this is the political situation right now and i think it's alarming and someone's and there may be very good counters to that but if someone's counters are is so what has happened in the past you give me one argument in the whole world where i cannot debunk that argument with but this has happened before uh, my argument is not that so what it has happened in the past no no then i stand corrected 
I am saying that it, when you are saying that this is happening today, it is important to hold people responsible for what is happening today. No, but that the, and I feel yeah. that in the case of the BJP's rise, I do feel that the quality of our secularism has been a farce. I mean, the you know the whole That's exercise true. of like you have a Dravidian party, you have a communist party. You know, these are parties which are not true to their own ideologies, and that is why you may say that you make fun of the fact that this rally nobody turned up in Tamil Nadu for the. Entire thing in this thing, but I mark my words. Okay, that they they not only exist over there, but they are growing. I you know if you go to Kanya Kumari today, right in the same Tamil Nadu, right look at the condition of Kanya Kumari, look at the condition of the Dravidian parties over there. See how powerful the right wing forces are over there. You go to Kasar Gold and Kannur. Kannur is supposed to be the headquarter of the Communist Party. In Kannur itself, you look at the kind of damage that the right can create. Where did the space for the right emerge? It emerged because of these parties. That's the only point I'm making. I don't disagree with you and. Look, yes, it is important to remember things like what Karuna Nidhi allied mm-hmm. with the BJP vote in the nineteen ninety nine, ninety eight. But I think, see, but when when do you bring it up in an argument when you're having it? I think it only works if it's a good faith argument where it is an interaction where you are discussing it with an outcome. But I feel that more and more it is used as like the, the conversation you mentioned, like a Twitter argument where people are just sort of bringing up things to sort of counter a point, but not to actually prove a point. So I would say that is the. See, your idea is sounding like this. Ki, I mean, if Indira Gandhi did it in the past, so Modi is doing it. So no, this no, is no. how your idea. No, is no, 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 no. I, then, then let me correct myself. I am not saying Indira Gandhi <laughs> did it, so this person is doing uh-huh. it. That would be a bad faith argument. My thing is that I come from oh. the point of view of the oppressed. Okay, who is the king has re- has mattered very little because every king has been actually Hindi, Hindi, Hindutva only. Hmm. Right, whether it's Indira Gandhi. uh or it is uh, a communist in the end of the day they have not been able to extract themselves from their own identity which is hindi uh, which is hindu which is upper caste which is dominant caste so therefore when you say that we have to you, you know that that this is not in good faith okay this is coming from a secular point of view only i am not saying that she did so he also is doing that's not where i am coming from i am saying that you brought this upon ourselves Oh, uh, you are rather you brought this on us. That is so. Fine. You so, brought this on us. That's all I'm saying. So, so, th- so, th- so and that's what uh, this Dilip Mandal is also saying. You know, which is that suddenly, आज उठके तुमको dictatorship dictatorship लग रहा है. But I think so. So you because can, it's hitting you. No, but you can say, you can say that. Uh-huh. But to say that to debunk a video which I have also uh-huh. seen and I think it is a very solid video. Very solid. Very solid video. Very solid. So it, what what is the purpose of the, if your purpose of the argument is to debunk that video? Then I'm sorry, that argument has no weight in my view. The most Amazing, educated person makes a video. I can guarantee you, with hundred percent certainty, I will poke holes in his video, saying, "But uh. you have not said why did this happen? The evolutionary biology. Why is it that the white man mm. got this, and why did they invent gunpowder or not? I can punch holes in anything." But that's tautology. I mean, you are giving an example of something random. We are talking about something actual over here. We are talking about a BJP leader who is being called a dictator, and a person saying that, "Hey, man, take a step back. Look at where how we got here." who is contributed to the to the to the to the emergence of this dictator i don't think that's quite the same thing i think that and i and i do feel that dilip mandal see the reason i say this is dilip mandal though he's not a dalit himself you know he appropriates a lot of space in that area uh, but <laughs> you know the 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 thing is that uh, he's coming from an anti caste perspective and from an anti caste perspective all these ruling classes are villains okay we don't give a flip a rat's ass okay about anybody tum sala tum jo bhi ho hamara khoon hi chusa tumne तो ये पॉइंट है और ये पॉइंट कोई बारह साल के बच्चे का नहीं है नो बट आई डोंट थिंक इट दैट इट टेक्स इट एनी वेयर पोजिशन इट डेज पोजिशन लेट एवरी थिंग बर्न टू द ग्राउंड बिकॉज Because I have no, never been I, part of any palace. Exactly, I have ne- exactly. never been part of any power exactly. circle. I have always been an audience. I have always been watching our power games. So let everything burn. Let the palace burn. Fair enough. That what I'm saying is that argument can be made on any injustice, anything. In which case. one cannot raise one's voice on anything because that point can be made by someone more marginalized than you about anything no your palace will also be burned i mean once modi attacks you i mean you do a story and and when he raids you and all that's provided we lived <laughs> then, in palaces then, then, the point that point your is the, that is provided we lived in palaces that's the entire this is a, no, this is a voice coming from the streets from the streets people who are living over there for them there is actually no difference So that's right. what I'm saying. This, this, this Which effect, is why I called it a nihilist argument. What you call nihil- nihilism has the has been the basis for all sorts of oppressed rebellions across time. Okay, who like for example, the, we, I many times in this conversation only we talked about the breaching of the Bastille, right? The French Revolution, in which 
it was like we'll kill the guards also we'll kill not just mary antena uh, antenet right uh, when the bolshevik revolution happened oh, russia yeah. russia the bolshevik revolution happened right there is a certain amount of, amount of nihilism when women say men men will say ah, all men or what mm. this is a nihilist argument the thing you have to identify is that people who are completely marginalized who are outside the political discussion will always have a nihilist view of politics because the pol- the politics doesn't include them hamara discussion nahi hai we are not part of this discussion let it burn so sure. so therefore i'm saying do not underestimate the the revolutionary potential of that nihilism it is a, it is an ism which whose time will come as the bolshevik revolution has shown and if it comes at that stage it will not be pretty it will be it will be pretty ugly okay to call it something to dismiss it okay will be at our own peril because modi the dictator let's call him the dictator only has happened because of this dismissal of the concerns of the most marginalized okay. so now there is a difference in the dismissal of the concept and the critique of an argument if the point is that i have to accept this argument no matter how poor i find its quality mm-hmm. because then that's dismissing it then there is no agency for me to exercise my logic and understanding of saying i accept this i reject this then just because of what is being said by who in this context i have to accept everything no i don't i will only filter what i think is sensible and what is not sensible i will obviously push back against now coming to your point about revolution on the hafta many times i have said a country like india which has the wealth disparity it does mm. it is a miracle there has been a revolution in the last 100 years and i have said this many times if i was standing on the streets and quote unquote i have said exactly these words in the summer of delhi or in the winter of delhi and i saw a car with the comfort that they have and my child was starving to death on the street i would have no hesitation in slitting a throat i would not think for a minute I understand that, but I will also say there is no chance in hell India will see a revolution. But the revolution already happened, no? No, no. You you described a very specific type of revolution. Ah, right, right. Bloody now you revolution. said, forget the bloody you said, revolution. You said we had you described a very specific type of revolution, mm. and you very specifically said that is. I am saying, I will bet my life we will not see that in India because in India, as a people. and you can see throughout history i can view the bengal famine hmm. example we were talking about a certain kind of politics upstairs before we came down right hmm. now about how leaders who were supposed to represent x now are representing y in india there is no chance it will happen because as a people it is so easy to make us obey by just a few people in power and fight amongst each other a revolution requires a certain amount of dismissal Discipline. of 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 a uh, hierarchy hmm. and hmm. that is just not happening here sorry we've spent too much time talking jashi why don't you come in and then ravan sir can come in and we can move on to on this no i mean i think you both have derailed entirely i forgot what the or my or i mean if i had to say something right now it would be that if we are still talking about rajya sabha the mondal piece <laughs> in the print then Achha, yes, by the way it's not I mean, he's mondal and i'm mondal okay so for the record he's not mondal he's mondal oh, mondal he's mondal okay. and i'm mondal both is No, no. I, I, no, my no, name is M O N. Yeah, we are Bengali from a different extraction. Mandal from North India. But does it all different. Bengali names replace uh, Abe though? Yes, but in this like, case, in the case of my surname, it comes from a different extraction. In the case of Dilip Mandal, it comes. It has a different origin. Got it. Pranoy. Okay, okay, so it pronoy, if right? we are yeah. still talking about his piece, hmm. man, I completely forgot now. It was a terrible <laughs> piece. Uh, hmm. I don't think it's an example of nihilism. I think hmm. uh, the def- that would be something completely different. So. That's it. I'm done. And if we are going to try and go back to Karnataka, I will say that uh, if we're talking about the Rajya Sabha and the BJP being ruthless and whatever, I would think that if I had to pick one guy in Karnataka who is perhaps working like the BJP, it would be DK Shivakumar. But so Deepak can tell me if I'm right. I feel like he's one of those types who, you know, he's a bit, little bit shameless. He does wonder. all the wheeling and dealing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so no, I always wonder what it's about. See, DK Shivakumar is a deeply Brahminical man. Okay, yeah. he he read out some poetry or some Vedic something. I remember in the context of referring to he his, was very unwell. Now when the they won, he was uh, shaking or shivering. Remember he was dry. I, the, some people are saying he was drunk. Some people are saying drunk, he was uh, yeah. yeah. Anyway, that doesn't matter. But the way he referred to his wife and his daughter, right? In this entire no, I don't remember. Tell me this thing. Ki uh, ghar, ghar ki shobha ye wo meri aurte bahane. Some some I I I since I don't remember the exact words, I not uh, hazard it. But a deeply Brahminical man, feudal, uh, his granite businesses and all that. You know, I wish we had the time and uh, you know, I suppose the safety net to go into those investigations and all of that. And I, he, somebody like him, him always makes me wonder. कि भाई वो कांग्रेस में क्या कर रहा है? You know, it's supposed to be a party which is now at least trying to walk a better 
uh, yeah. you know path so what's he doing over there uh, dk shukumar but then there are others who will say no who in the no but the dictator has to be defeated right so we need to have uh, cut these corners we need to have a dk shukumar we need to have the dmk's thugs we need to have the uh, cpm people who are going and, and that's doing what all he's this. taking them on at their game yeah. i mean that i mean they're playing all playing the same game that, that is something i think yeah. someone recently also quoted um that politics or democracy or election mm. is basically choosing the least worst option or something mm. like that mm. so yeah. but you're right you you have to cut those corners you name me one political grouping in the world any time in history mm. which was perfect even you know let let's take an example that is not part of our context but you know overseas um the d- defeating fascism mm. by churchill a deeply racist man himself by many britons who i think are rational reasonable intelligent people think he is one of the greatest britons of all time mm-hmm. but i think there were so many things which is why context matters which is news all about context because if context doesn't matter mm. i think you if you give anyone unbridled power it doesn't matter who he is how noble or wonderful that society is fucked which is why you have to mm. have counterbalances now if you're saying the counterbalance has to be perfect then we can keep waiting forever but if any party i why was i so against upa i mean it's not like i was pro modi and i've i've said that again on hafta at that time if i was given two choices either modi or upa third term at that time i said you modi yeah. you cannot give a party so corrupt a third term no but you're speaking but i'm a- the, i didn't think modi was wonderful or great i mean everyone knows what i thought of modi but if those are the truth you're telling me someone should get 15 years hmm It doesn't matter who it is. They should. It it should keep churning because that is the only way we evolve. No, I'm just saying that the, you're you're reading it as a voter. As a voter, if you put a gun to my head, I know that I'm not voting for the dictator, <laughs> right? If that's the question, okay. I'm saying as a journalist, I reserve my right to not hold anybody on a pedestal. I will criticize them. To the, that's the nihilism of the profession. That's where I'm coming from. Saying that yeah, these yeah. are people who are not beyond critics, right? And as a voter, I will also make those pragmatic choices if. Then no, absolutely yeah 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 no, absolutely no, i was responding to you said that if you know in the political game if one has to cut corners and replace x with y i said but in any political game that's the only way power mm. changes there is no perfect party that replaces a flawed party you know what i'm saying like even uh, what do you call uh, this whole biden trump thing mm. you know it's do two completely <laughs> <laughs> Two but the, yeah, but the, yeah, exactly. Two Biden Trump from hell is a great <laughs> example. Biden Trump is a great example. Now what? I like mean, who, what yeah. are you going to do? <laughs> yeah. No, they're, they're saying either you. So they're saying that what you tell people is that you're either voting for the actual genocide or you're voting for a worse potential genocide, and those are your options. Those are your options. <laughs> so. Yeah, dude. That, I mean, that is if you want to really have sympathy, people who have, who have even worse choice than us. <laughs> it's it's the US. It's right the US. Now. You think. for sure yeah and there also i mean something wrong with their politics too i mean the right movement has come But, up in such a big way in america in, in the form of i mean trump so i mean uh, some i um, mean the past politicians had done something wrong I mean, as your yeah, argument, no, I'm using. No, but I, I think so. Also, it's the same here also, but yeah. Also, I think it's a it's a digital age. It's also communication, social media. And huh. There is enough data to suggest social media has made us more tribal, hmm. and the loudest voice has disproportionate influence. It's a it's a question of the digital age. Internet has changed things significantly. Right. Huh. That, but also, I feel like people who are always. and have always been shameless i mean basically horrible people are now more sort of feel more equipped to tell you that they are horrible and how horrible they are so we have access to that info yeah about yeah. himachal pradesh interesting story if we are going to discuss rajya sabha hmm. election that's what we are discussing you don't really? notice <laughs> ramon sir did you not know get this discussion on nihilism <laughs> get to the was problem. allegedly on the rajya sabha so a very interesting theories uh, or some some grave wire uh there is a tacit understanding whenever there is a rajya sabha election say if bjp is going to win three seats uh in up so they will there will be three persons and they get so when you first allow audience elected how, how how are rajya sabha guys they get chosen? elected unopposed okay so like it's not a direct election ha it's not a direct election ha it's not a direct election to pura assembly ka jo size hota hai ha uske size ke hisab se then then if say bjp was supposed to win seven seats from up 
but based on the MLAs yes, that they have in the they, state. They pitted eight candidates. So the moment you do eight candidates, you know that some BJP is cross. You know, ha, they are expecting the, some ha, support, some game. The similar thing, you know, like happened in uh, uh, say Karnataka and uh, Himachal. Himachal also. So in Himachal, I mean, uh, the thing is, some people uh, there's one. Uh, one 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 uh, politician who's into sports also, so he's the he. It was said that he knew about it. So he did not take uh, any so preemptive action. I he did did not take. And but does anyone know this whole rule of because it was tied, it'll be a draw of lots. Is that decided on the spot or is that part yeah, of the written rules of election aware. commission? Because I I think that was kind of decided on the spot. That since it's a tie. No, no, no. I think it is no. That it and that's the case for other like even municipal elections. I think the thing says that in case of a tie, you would draw lots. That actually doesn't make sense. I mean, I I don't think it's if it's a tie, then there should be a repoll, no, like a runoff. No, Rajya Sabha election the way it, it, they are so flimsy. Like in Haryana, Subhash Chandra was the yeah. way he was elected was so flimsy. Yeah. That's true. Ah, no, they changed the pen. Color ha, of the so pen was different. As per Rule seventy five of the Conduct of Election Rules of nineteen sixty one, the Chief Election Officer of the State will hold draw of lot. Mm. Seems like a bit of a schoolboy thing. Too. Yeah, even I think <laughs> it's a bit bizarre. <laughs> but hmm. so, uh, so we can go into the emails because we've passed an hour of all the feedback we have received. But before we do that, anybody has anything more to share of? All the exciting stuff that happened in the week. Yes. So did you check out the drug haul? Oh, dude, three thousand two hundred. Three thousand kilos of hash, a hundred and fifty kilos of uh, from Gujarat, meth. right? Gujarat. Again, Gujarat. Now my only thing is, now all my all the people I'm speaking to since morning about that, I've been asking them, man, who can afford to order a consignment that size? That's a good point. We're not like, taking names, but true yeah. Can, so one fifty. Uh, no, dude, so yeah, that would be one fifty kilos of meth. Okay, I just did the math for the hash. Okay, so it is in Delhi and all that. It is five thousand, uh, ten thousand rupees a tola. So let's say uh, wholesale rates are five thousand rupees a tola, hmm. right? So you have three thousand kilos of that damn thing, which goes to some two hundred, three hundred crores. Yeah, that's wow. just the hash. And then there's hundred and fifty kilos meth. of meth, and there's something else, else, else. And all or that. maybe it, it was it. Maybe the transporter basically is supplying to five different parties. Each is who still <laughs> should be able to. Each of those parties should be able to afford at least a. Five hundred, eight hundred crores. They should be able to pay so cash road, down. Hundred crores, which by which with which which money we can start a channel. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> yeah, know? that's true. I mean, that's the kind of if someone's ordering a consignment that big, that means they have that kind of money, man. Mm. Money, but Who the has... fact that the police caught it, there should be some politics behind that too. They okay, haven't they accused Pakistan or something though? They said that the some, packet had yeah, some, some packet Pakistani had some Pakistan, name on it, mm. something like that. But the uh, this, thing came from Iran, I believe. But isn't this the third mm. hall in Gujarat? There was the earlier second, one also in Gujarat. Second major. There was one ah, in Gujarat. Abhi just last year, if I remember correctly, mm. the that big was one. from the uh, Mundra port. Mundra port. Right. Anyway, right. So yeah, that would be an interesting story. But who has is, the money to order that? Really, man. <laughs> Actually, dude, in India. Too many people have too much money. Now, I mean, See, by should, the way, if we read what, Indian Express's list of the hundred greatest Indians or whatever, mm. I'm sure we can pick out a bunch who would have the money. So you're yeah. saying it's one of the hundred? No, wait that, a minute. Mm. But that hundred majority <laughs> of them are powerful. I'll take no names, <laughs> but but uh, I think in the in this story, it's and it's it's a very difficult one to actually. It'll take so long. I mean, I think this is an investigation about. These repeated huge drug. What is a drug route in India? Where does it go? Mm. It's a story that can be done. But the pure now here's what I mean: the financials, the commercial story. It will t- easily take a year, if not two, right. to to really do a story of this to do justice. If you to want to do a serious story, so yes. it'll take a year because yes. of the amount of places you'll have to travel to, the amount yes. of contact, the so amount of information you get, uh-huh. sift through. Because the con, you know, the, the repercussion will be huge. You know, stay alive till the end of the that period also. That right? also <laughs> you'll get bumped off. <laughs> <laughs> Another big problem. Yeah. Uh, narcotics bill. Uh, uh, but, 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 <laughs> but reminding you, please subscribe to the joint News Laundry News Minute subscription. So, if there is a podcast going behind the paywall, outside the paywall, that you guys will decide. Okay. No. <laughs> you you are you are the ones who are training me on this no, no, entire. No. So, thing. first of all, please all of you write to podcasts at newslaundry dot com and tell us why you want Sudipto to start an interview program. We'll do podcasts and all, but he should be doing a one-hour video interview show on his own. I mean, try to convince him. 
So all of you also please convince him because I think he'll be fantastic at it. Uh, but for some reason, he's reluctant to do video, but we will all convince him together. Together we can and we will. Remember Sohei <laughs> Vilyasi? So, that was horrific. <laughs> you remember Sohei Vilyasi? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, dude, you haven't seen? I, 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 you remember, they are too yeah, young yeah, for yeah, Sohei Vilyasi. Yeah. He used to do a show called India's Most Wanted. And ironically, <laughs> he was arrested for murdering his own wife. wife. Yeah. But then convicted later also. And oh, his, shit. And his end was after he'd show this you know, had his program of how this person is on the run. And in all fairness, some of his shows, the person who was on the run got caught after his show because it was very popular on Z. Oh. It was before this is before news channels came in. Uh, and his sign off line used to be, Together we can and we will make a difference. <laughs> so, Deepa, I think you've found your show. I think I have. <laughs> Remake it for the for the modern age. So now we'll get on to the mails. You can write into us at podcasts at newslawny.com. I repeat, podcasts at newslawny.com with suggestions, recommendations, critique, what you think we can do better, etc., etc. The app criticism, please hold for another week or two. We know there's a big problem. We have more or less fixed it, but it'll be fixed by next week, I'm telling you for sure. Now, uh, you want to do the honors of uh, starting off with the emails and then I can take over yeah. when you're tired. Thank you. Sure. So the first one is from Raghav who says, Hello team, I wish to draw your attention to the problem of Bhivadi. It's one of the largest industrial areas in Rajasthan, part of NCR. There's been problem of toxic effluents released by chemical industries on the road. It's converted a huge part of the main road to a lake of poisonous waste. I've been witness to this phenomenon at least since 2002. The problem has only grown and it's a story of blatant corruption, competing political interests interstate rivalry, inaction of pollution control boards, and misery of the people who face it every day. I implore you to do a story on this issue. It's barely 60 kilometers from Delhi, submerged under a deluge of black water. Keep up the good work. Interesting, you sent someone yeah. there. I don't know if it's the mm. same place, but back when I was at Ajtak, there was a disease called dropsy, which had, uh, in Delhi, there were dropsy deaths, and suddenly dropsy had become this major mm. thing. I'll just Google it. And I had gone to... Um, this one place, I'm wondering if it was Bhivadi. It was actually it wasn't 60 kilometers from Delhi. It was closer. So dropsy. The Delhi was, dropsy thing was an adulteration thing, no? Uh, yeah. They ate, yeah, they ate but, something. Yeah. So there was a lot of these. So I had gone to where there was this one place apparently where these factories were, and there was a bunch of these deaths that happened in those areas. And I went to this basti, which was under about two feet of water that was smelling foul and it wasn't the monsoon. And it wasn't like like one, just one small neighbor. It was a huge area. Like hundreds of thousands of people lived there. Uh, you know, because you have bastis here also. But mm -hmm. So I was like, dude, like what happened? Did a sewer burst here or? They said, no, this it's like this. I said, it's like this, like right now. They said, no, it's like this through the year. Mm. Not just in monsoon. And this was like where uh, um, Bhavana is, mm -hmm. near Bhavana, I remember. And I had never seen that part of Delhi. Of course, now I've seen all of Delhi. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I can imagine. Um, but yeah, we should check it out. Yeah, so the next letter is from Dheeraj who says, Hi there. Something didn't feel right when the politics in Pakistan was dissed for three haftas in a row. The Pakistan expert predicted a Nawaz sweep, which did not happen. Imran's party did manage a big win, which I thought was a big fuck you to the army by the Pakistani awam. Was this not worth a discussion or am I completely missing the point here? I thought the tactics of the Tariq was a good pointer for Indian opposition parties. Um, and was the I Pakistan there? discussion, we did have uh, Nirupama and then it did seem like Nawaz Sharif was going to control it to the extent that he would win. So that was her prediction and it was wrong. I see. So, okay. I mean, yeah, but I mean, again, if we are to discuss Pakistan, we should get a Pakistani journalist, no? I mean, Nirupama is pretty good at it. No, no, but also someone who's actually ah. Pakistan journalist. Hmm. Anyway, I don't know, Dheeraj, so, maybe we will, yeah. let's see. Next email is from Harnik, who says, I totally disagree with Shardul's view that atheism has never been mainstream in India. We as Indians are so ignorant about Budhmarg, which was the dominant path our people and kings followed as late as 780. The modern empire, Ashoka, has inscriptions, Buddha stupa, etc. erected all across India in 350 BC. We can also find 780 inscriptions of other kings telling us about Budhmarg, but this aspect of our history has not been told to us. It's not been part of any syllabus. And it was not a religion purely because it does not believe in God or in Punar Janma, etc. or theories of basically all religions. I think we need to learn more about our history. Mm, I mean, I don't know if 
there's data or there's even possible to get data on this, but I would find it hard to kind of defend the proposition that atheism was a mainstream concept in India. I don't know. Would you think so? I mean, no. mm, in the times of the you know when Buddhism was ascendant, mm. this was uh, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. in fact, for that matter, if you look at the uh, uh, interpretations of the things that they found in Harappa in those sites, they see it as a you know as a kind of uh, a people who are largely indifferent to a divine other you know there's there's very little evidence that they kind of prostrated in front of a god or did a lot of rituals and hmm. you know and when i mean in this case so definitely we talk about buddhism versus brahmanism right where uh, the 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 shift happened with adi shankara who actually came uh, into uh, the shringeri mat in 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 karnataka where uh, brahmanism was at, at its lowest ebb so he borrows Revived. some of hmm. he borrows some elements from buddhism you know which he kind of then again kind of uh, alloys with you know uh, the vedic thing and then he comes up with this new faith and a lot of people would talk to talk about the benign aspects of hinduism they are all things that adi yeah, shankara literally borrowed from buddhism you know so, so i don't know harnek i mean i i, I mean I'll, i guess my entire view is of just modern history mm -hmm. but i uh, i mean all the history that we studied when we were doing class 10 religion has always been an important part of it but yeah maybe atheism was mainstream at some point i don't know mm. but you have a view on this jesh no i don't know uh, enough about the thing that he's writing about so i have no clue mm. Mm, mauryan time uh, yeah, people speak about it yeah mm. then the gupta period and all that too, you know the golden age of the gupta empire mm. that, that was, was a chapter when, name yeah that when, was when, a chapter when the mahabharata was written right <laughs> it's imagined to have been written in that period ab nanna nisi ratta tha mujhe yaad hai sir mujhe sab poems bhi yaad hai mujhe mujhe ye bhi i went to jhansi satpura ke ghane jangal we were sat i didn't have that in my uh, syllabus <laughs> i went to jhansi and i was we were shooting a show my assumption was that we will all the children of jhansi will know that story you know सिंहासन हिल उठे राजवंशों ने भ्रकुटी तानी थी आई बूढ़े भारत में फिर से नई जो नाउ खूब लड़ी चौकू चौकू ऐसे वील बच्चों करोगे हाँ हाँ करेंगे करेंगे दे वांट टू टीवी ऐसे रोके कम ट्वेंटी किड्स ऑन टीवी एंड देन आई सेड वन टू थ्री रोलिंग एंड वी स्टार्टेड एंड आई वॉज ओनली अंडरस्टैंड द पोएम अरे यू गाइज डोंट नो द पोएम हमें नहीं आती अंकल आप बोलो पीछे बोलो मैंने कहा यू आर इन झांसी आई सेड आई रिमेम्बर दिस पोएम या या झांसी दे आर टर्निंग टू ईच अदर एंड सेइंग व्हाट अ लूजर हूस दिस मैन ये सर अंकल आप बड़े वेले हो यार यस सो द नेक्स्ट ईमेल इज फ्रॉम एन एनोनिमस हु सेज कंग्रेचुलेशंस ऑन द इलेक्ट्रल फंडिंग स्टोरी विद द न्यूज़ मिनट ग्रेट वर्क इट मेक्स मी वेरी हैप्पी टू बी पार्ट अल्बीट इन अ वेरी स्मॉल वे ऑफ योर एंडेवर होपिंग टू कंट्रीब्यूट वे मोर वंस आई गेट अ न्यू जॉब It's February 26 today and I was hoping for your story to be picked up by major news outlets the silence has been deafening not just in mainstream media but also among major podcasters and YouTubers I have shared the story and your YouTube video with several non believers but one cannot expect people especially those who have surrendered to the supreme leader to read articles or watch a non sensational hour long video perhaps you can release shots regarding the story to get more people interested and pay attention to this fantastic piece of journalism yeah it was followed up a story Yeah, a couple of papers did follow up, but they, yeah, they did not really get it, delve into it. But they yeah. focused mostly because of the Congress press conference. Yeah, exactly. So mm. Not because of. Mm. Yeah, that's true. Rahul says, "Hello, and our team. I eagerly anticipate the release of Hafta podcast. It's the only one I listen to while working or engaging in seated tasks. I greatly admire Manisha for her keen awareness of recent events and her rational viewpoints. Abhinandan's candid perspectives resonate with me personally. Raman sir's contributions are always a delight." Keep up the good work, so they thought you and I can just leave basically. <laughs> But yeah, then he says I have a suggestion. It would be incredibly helpful if you could recommend the NL stories and ground reports posted for the week, or at least provide a link to them in the podcast description. Integrating this alongside the end of podcast recommendations would be fantastic. Much good love point. from Denmark. Hmm. Does he mean that everything that goes up in the week? Yeah, ground reports. I, I I think he means not just the, not the opinion pieces, but the ground reports that News Run is done in that week. I think we can have a separate newsletter for that. That's a good idea. That could go as a separate thing every week. But we do have that. But, no, NL Digest. No, but, but, yeah, yeah but does it? But does it have all the ground reports linked? In the tabloid, it's, it's got all the ground ones and some yeah. of the opinions. Just a couple of opinions. So, jointly, करते थे. Jointly करते थे. I know. In fact, we should have a joint. 
Yeah. Let's work on that. Let's have a joint uh, newsletter that goes out mm. with News Minute and mm. News Laundry ground. Reports. And you know, we'll, such a the Sunday our wingspan s- starts looking very yeah. wide because suddenly we have North India, Geography, South India, yeah. some oh, district great, somewhere right? in the Can south. Can we make a note of it? You should have a new newsletter. Yes, yes. Rahul, that's a good idea, but I yeah. think you've given and us some of our reporters. I mean, if I can give a shout out, I mean, people like uh, uh, Bhavani. Uh, Shivani then you have yeah, Akshaya I think would be a better all idea these people are going all. on the ground and they could be read in the north you know yeah exactly that's a very good idea we'll do that let's work on sorry, that sorry Jayashi you were saying something no I was saying I think a separate newsletter like that would make mm. more sense than just crowding it into our hafta mm. huh. which already has goes and then we are a national magazine huh? <laughs> 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 no longer a newsletter yes <laughs> national sorry you can give Jayashi you can give one from there no, <laughs> no it's fine it's fine don't no? worry <laughs> Mm. <laughs> you guys looked so cool doing it that yeah. I will abstain. <laughs> thank you. Thank yes, you. so email from Ayush who says, I have been a subscriber of many years now, at least since Hafta went behind the paywall for the first time. I am very heartened by News Laundry's progress and the lovely media environment you've created for reporters. The lovely editing team puts out articles that are relevant long after they are published, especially in a world where history rhymes so much that it almost repeats. Also, I'm super excited about the articles being read as I was missing out on some articles due to lack of time and not being able to see it. The incident with Caravan having to take its article down reminded me that India's media landscape is closer to, Ruxh- to Russia or China than any other democracies, and the IT Act, which has been challenged in court, if I am not mistaken. Also, there should be an account of how much the government spends in media and for rallies that are arranged during elections. That budget would be a crazy expense at the cost of a taxpayer. Also, my question is, how does the affluent public not realize the government is using their money to muzzle the voices that should speak up for them? Thanks for the good work. All the best. Just on the last bit, Ayush, I think they realize it's just that they don't care because they still have enough to have, have a good life. So they, <laughs> they really don't give a shit. The next email has a lot of Hindi, so I think you can read it. So Parth says, I am Parth. I have been listening to you people agree and disagree on different levels and topics for a long, long time, but subscribed last year. Uh, who subscribed way too late like a true Indian, but now I'm trying to get more people to independent media to redeem myself. Thank you, Parth. Appreciate it. What motivated me to write was the malfunction of your crappy app for the podcast. Is got thick karlo yar. On it, most of it has been fixed. Parth, as you have noticed, the rest will be fixed soon. Uh, I always tell my dad, challenging his RSS leaning Hindu Rashtra inclination, jokingly. Pata hai, in a sense, tumko dekh ke tasalli hoti hai. Mujhe bharosa hai ki panch saat saal se zada kuch nahi chalega BJP ka kyonki <coughs> in order of influence. One in efficiency of bureaucrats, two Supreme Court, three farmers, four students, very underrated, five opposition. Looking elsewhere in the world with what could happen and what is happening, I think India is going through an Indira phase. What was pointed out by Siddhartha and uh, the, the <laughs> discussion we had. I used to be very tense, but I realized I've also become a little paranoid. So I try and dial it back. <laughs> well, you become too paranoid. A lot Story of, of our lives. Out. By the way, regarding the new data protection cloaked entire control three laws, were they not challenged in court? What happened? Uh, I don't know about the data protection laws where they were controlled. I mean, I, I don't know to what level of note because there was a said, I privacy, is it a fundamental right or not? That was being heard. I don't think a final, has a final um, order been given on the, the privacy as a fundamental right? I don't, I don't, I'll just check. So, don't know. and even the Kunal Kamra versus the IT amendments, the final order is not yeah. clear. Coming to, speaking of final orders, the Supreme Court had said that all the people who donated to through electoral bonds, 13th March is the last 13th day. 13th no? March. Let's see what happens there. But Parth, no, 13th March, SBI is supposed to give the list. But, but thank you for your kind words. Thank you for trying to convince people to subscribe to us. Really appreciate it. And may you long hear us agree and disagree on the Hafta week after week. Yeah. Uh, next mail is from Norman, who says... I regret the length of this mail, but I felt compelled to bring it to bring to light a concerning trend within our country's esteemed educational institutions, where academic spaces are being infiltrated for political indoctrination by the BJP. I found myself in a disconcerting situation upon entering my classroom. A small faction of classmates deliberately engaged in provo- provocative behavior, using random Muslim greetings in my presence, clearly directed at me. Despite my initial bewilderment, I attempted to overlook their actions, but their persistence forced me to address the issue directly. Later, in the absence of our professor, they brazenly chanted Jai Shri Ram slogans. When I requested they cease, they responded with unwarranted inquiries, questioning my nationality with implications of allegiance to Pakistan. This unwarranted hostility left me deeply upset, especially considering my consistent respectful demeanor towards them, despite limited interaction. 
Their subsequent threats, warning me against expressing my dissenting views on Modi and Hindutva, left me fearful for my safety. Desperate, I sought recourse with the head of our department, only to be met with disbelief. I said I was informed that seeking support for the college administration or faculty would yield no results as they align themselves with the agenda of the current government. I was cautioned against escalating the matter to the principal as it could potentially backfire. To my dismay, instead of receiving protection from the threats, I was advised to apologize to my aggressors and refrain from expressing my opinions on social media. The realization that such incidents could occur within a renowned institution like the University of Delhi is profoundly disheartening. Which which university is this? Delhi. Within University of Delhi, but he's not named. He hasn't said which, which university. It could be any of the universities in Delhi. Mm, yeah, the one actually, um, I heard of a instance. I mean, these are still adults who I think. I mean, I'm I'm not saying they are more nasty or influence than children, but on assumes children don't really indulge in this. Uh, I was just told by a friend of mine that in the school, which is a very posh school of Delhi, um, this Muslim kid was harassed that, are you Pakistani, mm. are you Pakistani? I was like, I was like, dude, like 12, 11-year-olds. Yeah. It's reached that level. Yeah, which is why I was saying leadership matters. I mean, it's it's not like suddenly these kids have no, ideology. My, yeah. What a leader makes normal is what people think is normal. No, the hashtag. I can't disagree with that. Muslim yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Barber, uh, you know, he, he works like uh, as a barber. In he's got a shop. He brought his family and his uh, children. Children were studying in that hill state, uh, Uttarakhand. So they again they started teasing uh, his children. children, and uh, he had to send them back. Mm. He took them uh, out of the Pura. school, and uh, now they have been to yeah. Some village and they are studying over there. In fact, we discussed this in Hafta a few years ago where there was this bat argument in a train which led to someone being made to shout Jai Shri Ram and being beaten mm -hmm. up in video. It wasn't a communal, it was an argument, it was on seats, you know, who's... Mm. But because the two people arguing that one was a Muslim, it basically goes down there because then they, you're just the stronger party. Mm. Uh, yeah. Right, so... Last letter is from Sudipt, who says, Many subscribers like me depend on NL to form their opinions on various issues. To remain unbiased, it's important for news laundry presenters and interviewers to push back whenever any important assertion is made, whether one implicitly agrees with it or not. This did not happen in the recent Hafta 473 discussion on the farmers' agitation with agricultural policy expert Devinda Sharma. For example, citing data, a claim was made that average income from farming in India is 27 rupees a day. What is the source of this data? Since it doesn't include non-farm income, how is this figure even calculated? Similarly, without doubting the pitiable condition of small farmers in India, the role of rich versus poor farmers in the agitation can't be resolved by merely mentioning Abhinandan's rich farmer friend in passing, especially since it has been made such a big issue by those who oppose the agitation. A related point is that an average number is not indicative enough because we don't get a nuanced view of the range of income in this case and therefore its impact on different income groups. Similarly, I'm unclear as to why only farmers from the north are seen to be agitating about MRP. Moreover, the effect of these changes on agricultural labourers is not considered. In summary, the discussion was neither as nuanced as I had expected it to be, nor did it leave me informed or educated on the issue as I was hoping. I suggest for a counter view, please invite someone like Ashok Gulati who opposes the MRP and ask him some tough questions. Okay, so yeah. we'll try to do an LT on this, but... Uh... On the south, why? I mean, I know there were some farmers from Karnataka who were trying to come for this agitation. Mm -hmm. I don't know about Tamil Nadu and Tamil Kerala, Nadu. but I, I I saw the videos of the Karnataka farmers want to join. But you know, the farmers this Maharashtra time. Maharashtra also correct. Yeah. yeah. No, but I, if I don't know if I got the entire drift of what this person is saying, but essentially the fact that the fa that farmers are not a homogeneous group is that where where they where the letters coming from? He was from? saying that yeah, it doesn't account for disparity of income of farmers. Mm, mm, that is that is fair, and I and I do feel that uh, in the case of this particular round of agitation, so there is a lot to be suspicious about. You know who they said they are not politi political. Uh, you know that in the beginning uh, they were they did not want the support of the left. Then the left turned up over there and said, "Nay, we are giving our solidarity anyway, but oh, we who, can't." Who landed from the left this time? I can't remember who, but there was a delegation. I think that extended really? solidarity. At least they gave a statement saying that we are extending solidarity, mm. but they did not join them directly. Mm. But uh, this, though, I think it prohibited them from j coming on stage or talking on their behalf. Now, last time, yeah. Yeah. Mm. no. In this again, so there is a left wing view and a right wing view. Hmm. Uh, but I do feel that these questions are very important as to who is a farmer, and this is in fact something that I think. Uh, 
uh, got me into a little bit of a, a little bit of trouble with my mentor uh, P Sainath. You know, uh, I have a lot of regard for him, and he keeps saying farmer, farmer, and we were a bunch of Dalit kids in the class, and we said, but what is a farmer? Who is a farmer? Right, and in the language of the left, the farmer is even today. I was like, I was preparing for my interviews for CPI and CPM. Even now, their their uh, the nomenclature is landlord, peasant, medium uh, land holding, large land holding, small land holding farmers. Uh, whereas you need to find other identifiers for these people, these mm. different groups, because these land holdings are a result of your social location. Of uh, you know, so so many other things are there. In fact, uh, there is data on many of, but I, I mean, I think. Which is why the labor laws also impacted a significant, if not majority, of the quote unquote farmers don't own the land; they just mm. are tilling it. But to one, uh, so they, uh, your question we can answer like for sure is the data. That data is from the Situational Assessment Survey for Agricultural Households. It came out in twenty twenty one. It's computed the average monthly income of a farm household at ten thousand two hundred eighteen. If you were to not include income from non-farm activities, farmers earn twenty-seven a day. This is from that, and uh, mm. on the website, which is microdata.gov, which is a government website, you can also get the complete report. Uh, what you make of this report is up to you, but that's the mm. data. It is credible enough data, um, as data goes in today's. Has come age. from the government. So, so it's, yeah, so so that is the source of data. When it comes to the rest of the stuff that you spoke about, yeah, I mean, I guess we can have, you know, more views, but. From what I've understood, from uh, I think uh, uh, Choker sir also spoke about this a little bit, and my understanding of the commerce and the economics of this, it is a product, and what their demands are, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, we can have a longer this thing. Like market pricing can work in two ways. One is how the market demand and supply determine it. One is if there is a minimum support price, and you know, like fuel, the government decides or certain things. Now, if you, I don't know if you remember, sugar cane. Sugar was a big issue in the seventies and eighties mm. uh, because sugar was, in fact, sugar mills, and most of them were owned in UP. All the sugar mills took money from Subrat Rai Sahara. That's how it became this because every day they had to give cash to the farmers who came. The government decided how much sugar cane you could crush. They gave you quotas. The government decided the price of that sugar cane, and the government decided the price at which sugar you can sell. So the economics of it, no sugar mill could make money. So every sugar mill made money by crushing more than their quota and selling it in the uh, black market. Hmm. So because if you just go, so it, so my understanding of this problem and this aspect of it is this is a unique business where your input costs are variable. They could be anything. They could fluctuate wildly, and what comes of that is not up to you. Like for example, if I say. I will get ten things and I'll make this. I can give you ninety-nine percent guarantee that I will make this in X amount of time after I have the screen, this etc. But farm once I've sowed the seeds, etc., etc. Six months later, I don't know. You know, rain comes, not come, weather, pests, and then when it happens, if there's a bumper crop, the price you know goes way down. So basically, the economics of this business is. Extremely high risk, and one of the things that I think Devinder sir said was that insurance is one way to take care of it. Yeah. So I think on that aspect, I was a little better informed after that discussion. But we'll try to get a more informed discussion so you can learn more about it, and so can we all. Can I can I just say one mm. very rhetorical, very throwaway statement? Mm. Okay. Now, in the in the in a in a big picture sense, you are asking for government support, right? Uh, where you are resisting government intervention mm. in that entire sector. Hmm. Right. Uh, questions. Several, several questions come. Land reforms will happen then. Collectivization could happen then. Hmm. If you want the government to mitigate your risk, then abandon your autonomy. Grant us the uh, you know fact that we know the economy better as as the state. You know, in a in a more controlled environment, your farming can be more productive because we also know that the Indian farmer is among the most inefficient in the world, and that is a result of a lack of education. That's a result of a lack of modernity. That's a social problem that is resulting to resulting in an economic problem. Also wherein, geographic. But let's look at the social. The fact that this is an uneducated person, okay, who refuses to get educated hmm. because he has land holding, and I say he very deliberately over here because he doesn't even acknowledge the contribution of the she in the hmm. agriculture business. Now this is a person who needs to be brought into modernity, and for which you need to have greater 
state intervention in that entire agriculture sector will that land holding fellow who's deciding elections allow for this well it depends on what those demands are i mean like you said it's rhetoric so it's a very broad based mm. thing but the very fact that one wants government intervention means that one does want intervention protection what, what they want that... government protection but not government intervention na it's a different thing but that's just semantics i mean protection no protection means price protection they want price protection they yeah, want the thing to be purchased at a certain but rate but if there is a way to make it efficient and win win for all I think it's a proposal that someone should take to them. The government says that okay, we can control this. You know, this is the ideal land holding. This is what one should do. Land but reforms take away land from all these fifty uh, acre, hundred acre walas. But I think already there is a cap on agricultural land. Right? It had been lifted during the SCZ time. Mm. There is a cap on agricultural land. I don't know if it's in all states, but I definitely know that there is a cap in Punjab, Haryana. I think that cap was put land like in the seventies. Even otherwise, because of the social, for the social reasons as well. It has changed no, no. quite a bit. After that entire, I mean, there was a huge land reform movement. Now, uh-huh. when the, the the whole cap of land, this there happened, is. I think in Indira Gandhi's time only. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Bhudan movement. The Bhudan movement. But me, ज़्यादा हुआ नहीं था दान. दान नहीं हुआ था, but around that time they also put a cap then. Hmm. No, okay. but there is a way to yeah. yeah, yeah the the logo, yeah, logo, yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, because I remember one of the. It's not reforms, you know, like it's not land holding reforms. It's you cap it at a certain level. मतलब उसके आगे तुम मोन नहीं कर सकते. Hmm. And that there's an exception uh, when it comes to plantations, which is you know rubber plantations, tea plantations. Because the size can, has haan, to be there. There it is considered an industrial activity, not a farming activity. The, there are some of these things. Also, I think during the SCZ Act, that was one of the things that they had waived. Mm-hmm. that the cap on agricultural land they had removed because before that there was a cap mm-hmm. so yeah i mean to what extent but the intervention to what extent it should be there or should not be there but purely the economics of just like the the economics of sugar did not make sense in the 80s there was no way you could actually run a mill that made money mm-hmm. if you stuck mm-hmm. to the rules you know similarly with a lot of agriculture right. not so on that note Uh thank you for writing in you can write into us at podcasts at newsline.com a better way of doing it is click on the link in the show notes below and a form will open out which you can actually send us your feedback we only entertain the feedback of subscribers so subscribe and pay to keep news free because when the public pays the public is served when advertisers pay advertisers served we will never get tired of saying it we will say it till the day we die now on that note let's get the recommendations for the week jesh you want to go first Yes uh <clears throat> I have just one recommendation. Mm. Uh so it's a bit of shameless self promotion but uh, 10 years ago I did the story um where I reported on self immolation suicides in Tamil Nadu. So I'd basically been looking at crime uh NCRB data for 2013 and out of 10,000 people who died and 10,000 people had died by suicide from self immolation that year in 2013 and 20 in 2000 of them were in Tamil Nadu 2000 were in Tamil Nadu. So There are a lot of reasons for it. I mean, there's social, political. There's this entire history and culture and whatever attached to it. But the reason I'm resurrecting the story is also because of Aaron Bushnell, who died uh, outside the Israeli embassy. I think it's I think it's sort of important to remember why it happens, and also it's interesting to sort of see why people make these choices. So it was a very tragic sort of story to work on, but um, you can read it anyway. Why not? So it's published in Functioning Magazine. Um, the headline is "A Most Painful Way to Die." It is behind the paywall, but I mean, all our listeners are supposedly independent media supporters, so I think they know what to do. Right. So yeah. Thank you, Raman sir. The two good articles uh, on consumer index, uh, the data which has just come come in, uh, in Indian Express written by Ashwini Desh Pandey, in Hindu uh, written by M Suresh Babu, the two economists, and they have uh, you know. Uh, contested this data and they have also uh, you know brought out the anomaly of it uh, how uh, you know how you can end up misinterpreting uh, it and also they pointed out uh, you know to the fact that uh, if we go by this consumer index and we if we go by what government does so i think we have some kind of dual economy uh, like uh, as you said that Uh, on the one hand, you eighty crore people are being fed free ration, yeah, the <laughs> and you are saying there is eight percent of uh, poverty. Mm. Uh, this thing, and also uh, you say that there is no the unemployment has decreased over the years, mm. but you have uh, so many uh, under Manrega, so many employments that have come up. So 
so it's quite contradictory and uh, so very good two articles uh, which appear today and uh, the third uh, recommendation is uh, j mazumdar's article on this animal naming ah. the animals beautiful anchor which mm. came out yesterday uh, and which we will discuss these three so dipto uh, uh one to definitely our own uh, election uh, funding all these stories we did that uh, mm. investigation on the judge no right oh news uh, minute yes please read it down to the last line also there is something interesting in it <laughs> <laughs> you know it is such a nice uh, story so well structured also uh, i'll give the last part out okay so uh, the judge has withdrawn the complaint realizing uh, that it is his own mistake after all to give some two crores to somebody <laughs> yeah, please know? read this basically the story is about a judge from a high court who gave money to these two fellows to get his sir child. sir sir not two fellows not Aris. two random people okay these are who he claims because claims me no this is his uh, his, his sons uh, his uh, digital trail shows that he is the head of some international uh, you know hindutva organization ye wo he is not so like a pushover hmm. ha some big guys only yeah, please read the story link yes, in the yes. show notes hmm. so that is one recommendation please read uh, the other uh, of course i mean because we discuss uh, so much about it you know uh, do read dilip mandal's piece you might not agree with it there are points i also don't agree with but it is it is an interesting provocation it is a question that we have to encounter in this entire political debate and you must read stuff that you don't disagree, disagree with that's yeah, all right that you might not agree with and uh, also there's a piece appear that is that's appeared in the print today by subhajit naskar uh, this professor in jadavpur who has a very third view of what's happening in bengal right you have the right view and you have i would assume in some sense Uh, Mamta occupies the left today for whatever it's worth, hmm. but he has a third view, and I think that's an interesting take on the matter in, uh, in terms of what's happening in Bengal, right? He says that no matter who is doing the beating and the killing and all of that, the ones who are dying belong to one strat of society. Hmm. Uh, so yeah, these three records. Okay, my recommendation is a podcast called Three Million, the devastating story of the Bengal famine of 1943 mm-hmm. in British India. Uh, it's called Three Million because three million people are estimated to have died, which is a I mean, just think about that number. It is more than what at least is claims uh, of of during the partition, the amount of people who actually died. Uh, it is deeply distressing, deeply disturbing. Uh, but the following three things that rookie takeaways for me: one is how um, horrible human beings can be, especially when you have privilege and you can see everything around you. And I've said this so many times on the podcast, like in sitting in twenty twenty four. we look back and say how could humanity allow this to happen i think people in 2200 will be sitting back and saying so you guys are going about your regular lives where there were women with the little babies on red lights dying in the winter and you were going for dinners i think every age will have its Nero. normal just like it was normal to have slaves at one point i mm-hmm. think what we think is normal today future generation will say you guys are fucked in the head uh and the second thing what was key in this was no british newspaper was allowed to use the word famine because they did not want especially during the second world war and all that you know this propaganda to go out that oh there's a famine a man made famine they've caused so you were not allowed to use the word famine and a british newspaper found a loophole there was no mention that you cannot publish paper, photographs So he sent his photographer to click photographs of people who were looking like skeletons, you know, someone being eaten on the street. So whatever, and he published those, but he didn't use the word famine anywhere. Uh, so that was what a British newspaper did uh, when the British had rules like they did. Mm-hmm. Nothing has changed clearly in so many ways, but people still find ways to put the truth out there, and that's what I hope we do with your support. Thank you to our sound recordist Anil. Thank you to our producer Aryan. Thank you to my panelists Jayshree, Raman sir, and Sudipto. Thank you. And thank you to all of you. This hafta is free again, but we'll get the app fixed. Keep supporting us. Keep supporting the News Minute, and let's convince Sudipto to start doing a video show. 